Stephen Jill here. Hey. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, coming to you from scorching Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> Not yet, but you're coming. Yeah. We'll be in a it's different probably state. Probably today. We'll be in a different state for sure when it, when it gets real hot. Today, Jill and I talk about real estate investing in the year 2021. What's different about the past and uh, what's probably coming in the future. You know what this is like? I remember when I was um, dating, newly dating, late teens, early 20s, and you're a girl, I'm a girl, all hung up on a guy. And my mom sat me down and said, look, don't get all hung up on this guy. (laughs) You think this is it, you know, this is the guy, these are the, this is, you know, what I'm going to do, whatever. He loves me, but he loves me. You don't understand. It wasn't even that. I was too into him, but my mom's like, look, let me just share this with you. The guy that you bring home at 18, 19, 20 is pretty different from the guy that you're serious about in 30, 31, at an age that you should be really getting serious. Oh, do tell. What are the differences? Well. Because <laughs> this is going to be the show now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Want some truth time? Yep. I may or may not have been in a punk rock phase <laughs> at that age. <laughs> I once had my hair done. Came home and my mom cried. (laughs) (laughs) So I may or may not have dated a guy that wore more eyeliner than I did. (laughs) And as you can see, Stephen wears zero eyeliner. (laughs) So there's a little difference there. I'm the guy she settled for. (laughs) (laughs) Where's eyeliner guy now? I don't know. He probably, anyway. probably looks like me. Yeah. Just a lot less money. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, anyway, that's one really good example of what's what what was then and is now. You know what what you thought was important then, and wow, it's the end all be all. And what's really important now are different. And what's really going on in 2021 now with real estate and investing and everything is pretty darn awesome. And I'm glad that you're older and can handle it. And you're ready for it. <laughs> I don't even understand. Is 2021 the punk rock guy or the old guy like me? 2021 is you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That was a, a year that I'm not going to call out, but it was way before 2021 okay. when I you're was 20. You're actually signing a real year. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free if you're already in our group. Join us on Discord. It was in the 80s. I will be truth. So, okay. Austin wrote, hello, I'm writing this in response to podcast number 1479. Do you remember that one? I do. Oh, yeah. I I remember every single word. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) (laughs) I remember episode 10. I love it. Um, it, uh, About recovering landlords. I do remember that. I've owned a duplex for about 10 years. This is going to be funny. It cash flows about $600 a month, depending on expenses. If I was to sell it right now, I could gross approximately $220,000 after paying off the underlying mortgage. I'm going to stop you there for a second. Yay! You would net two twenty, dollars not gross. Okay. This is, uh, you know, oh my God, Jack. Really? Do you have to call us out on every little nitpicky thing? Gross, net, please. He does. Just... He does. Well, for the same reason that your mother stopped you from saying ain't your whole life, like I ain't going to eat my, uh, you know, my broccoli. Okay. You're picking on us. It's net. got it. It's net. You're going to net 220. Well, look, we're all real estate investors here. We should just, we should learn to speak the language. It's not a criticism. I'm just helping. It's a helpful reminder from Jack. (laughs) 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> the real estate fees and other taxes would still need to be subtracted. I'm not sure what this looks like tax-wise until I have a chat with my accountant. Would you guys hang on to this asset and let rents and equity go up or sell it and apply to property acquisitions? I know what I'd do. We're going to answer at the same time. Hold, please. I could also do a cash-out refinance as well. Thoughts on this? Okay, so here are your choices. 
And we're going to do one, two, three. We have three choices. One is hold. Two is sell for cash. Three is refi. 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 So hold, cash, refi. All right. Or hold, hold, sell. Hold, sell, refi. Okay. Three, two, one. Sell. sell. That's why we're together. Thanks for playing, Austin. Your prize today is a free trip to see Land Academy deal funding in person. <laughs> That's Here's a, why. It's Austin, I'm not picking on you. I'm just, I want you to make, I want you to have a great real estate career. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Let's think about this like it was an investment, not a not a piece of property, but uh, I, don't, I don't know, any investment that you'd make, a piece of uh, shares of stock or convenience store, anything that you could make. You paid, if you have uh, equity of $220,000 in this thing, you paid more than that. You probably paid over 300, or let's just say you paid 300, 280, some number, 250, I don't know. You put at least twenty thousand dollars, twenty or thirty thousand dollars into this thing, unless you have some weird two percent down mortgage. So if, even if that's the case, that's not good because well, it doesn't matter. You probably paid more than that. It's cash flowing at six hundred dollars a month, so you make what seven thousand dollars, seventy two hundred dollars a year on something that you put. It's going to take you how many years is it going to take to recoup your costs, and how much risk do you, are you taking? I have a comment to make. I just did the math. And if you do, give me one second, Joe. Okay. If you refi, cash out refinance this, you're just leveraging it more. So it becomes a less worth, uh, the asset becomes less valuable to, to when you go sell it. So this is not, you know, that's the reason we did the re- uh, episode 1479 is to really inform people about these tiny little houses or t- duplexes or quads that I don't think almost ever make sense financially unless you're like, Buying it in California where you know it's going to double in value uh, in five to ten years. But even now, California is making it impossible, very impossible, in my opinion, very hard for landlords to collect rent. And that's not going to be a new thing. It's going to be, you know, this is the part of the show today. So get the hell out of that thing. I think you did great up until this point. Let's let's talk. Here's here's my math. Six hundred dollars a month times 12 months is you make seventy two hundred dollars a year times 10 years that's $72,000 I love wow, you're still the girl for me why would I want to pass up $220,000 now to hold on to this for another 10 years and still not make that much money it comes that down would be to 20 years 20 years of your life and headaches and tenants and moving in and moving out and carpet cleaning and carpet replacement and new roofs and uh, you know all of that for less money i take the money <clears throat> what i could do and what you could do austin because you're in land academy now we got you with two hundred twenty thousand dollars in six months you know it's you could turn you know, that into a million dollars easily 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 so what's the thing i'm like i to me, it's just no question. I think you did great. Me too. You did awesome up to this point. Now you need to cash out and make some different decisions. This is not some scheme to get you to join Land Academy. It's not at all. You're already in the mm-hmm. in the club. It's not some way to get you to do something you're not comfortable with. It's just pure math. Yeah. You know, if uh, if you were a grandfather and you're 82 years old and you just didn't have the energy or care about yeah. buying and selling land, then a, a duplex where you you collect six or seven hundred dollars a month or seven thousand dollars a year and it complements your social security and you're playing with your grandchildren all the time that's a great investment mm-hmm. but that you give you, to the you kids like, ha- that you give to you Austin. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you obviously have um and the energy and the interest to do other things in real estate that's why you're here and i just yeah. think your your quarter mail is going to be put to great use by turning land deals exactly that's good. In fact, if you were going to say, I want to put it, I'm going to sell my duplex and buy and sell houses right now, I would say keep the duplex. Okay. So land is the way to go. Today's topic, real estate investing in 2021. This is the meat of the show. I hope I wasn't too hard on them. I don't we'll mean find to out. Well, we'll, I'm, sh- I'm sure we'll hear about it. <laughs> There's some people. I'm not, Austin, I'm not picking on you. Yeah. I get in a lot of trouble sometimes by answering these questions. If he, I was smart, I wouldn't use the right name. You know, Austin name. knows. I think we got to know you by now. 
you you uh, good bad or otherwise you are very transparent and truthful and speak your mind I want everyone to succeed mm-hmm. sometimes I wish you wouldn't speak your mind <laughs> <laughs> Do you have some questions for me on this topic? Yeah, my favorite thing. My favorite thing is when you when I walk out and you go, "Not your best look." <laughs> I don't do that unsolicited ever. <laughs> She's paraphrasing. <laughs> she gets she pestered. All men know this. <gasps> Does this make me look fat? No, sweetheart, you look. I don't awesome. do that. You look great today. I don't is say that, that. Is that new? I'm like, no, hey, you, what you do you think? Say, I'm like, what do you mm-hmm. think? I feel good about it. And you're like, oh, no, no, you look fantastic. Yeah, I would absolutely. Not your best look. <laughs> no, that's my my final to end it after 10 comments that didn't get received well. I've, I have a lot of goodwill piles. You look great today. Thank you. Anyway. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm telling you, you look great. I think that's new, isn't it? No, no, I got that two years ago. All right. I'm not sure it fits right. I opened fit right? open a can of worms. I don't even say that. <laughs> Just sometimes you do. I don't, but thank you. Thanks for throwing me to the bus, the imaginary bus that I didn't even bring to the table. You kind of did. <laughs> anyway. You brought this all up yourself. All right, back to the topic. So I was going to ask you, okay, now it's 2021. I have five things I want to ask you about. I want to ask you from then, you know, because there's change then to now. I want you to give me your old best resource and your latest one. So like, let me give you, like number one is data. Think back when you first started this, how did you get data? And tell me what you do now, what's your number one tool? So there's no data uh, that was available in any way like this. What I did was I, I would take any type of data set that, where I could get a fax number. Let's say it was uh, back in my way back days, it was anybody who owned a nursing home or an assisted living facility had to register with the national, wherever they got money. And so they had to disclose their phone number and who the administrator was. It was a pretty good database, actually. And it was in a book, like a a phone book. And so I, one time for like two weekends straight, input that, every all of it, and got a very solid list of fax numbers and a person to send that fax to. So that was the only data sets that we had. There was no, the only way you could get data, to, and I wasn't in the business yet, for uh, landowners was to go to the county and ask them for the data, and they would hand you, and they, by law, have, it's, uh, think that we're, the reason we're all in business public. is it's public information. So they would hand you a green bar sheet, IBM printed out green bar sheet, and you'd have to input it that way too. What's your 2021 favorite tool for that now? Data tree. Good. If you can get a data set in any county, they have 100% coverage in the country uh, for any county and download it in seconds, which what used to take me two weeks to get it, in, get it into the correct format. Love it. Okay, number two, mail, then and now. What was your, how, would you, how would you effectively send out offers then to now? So there was no bulk mail scenario, no such thing as a mail merge uh, in the early 90s. Uh, Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word were in their infant stages and they didn't connect through a mail merge. In fact, most people, including me, were using Lotus instead of Excel. So there wasn't a way to send mail other to landowners other than um, taking that green bar sheet and typing it out one Yikes. by one, which I didn't do. I opted for this fax thing for commercial real estate. Love it. What's your number one mail source now? <laughs> Is this a trick question? Kinda. Well, we were so on un- Jill and I were so unsatisfied <laughs> with the our bulk mail client in two thousand and uh, what two thousand and four? No, no, two thousand and ten. Mm-hmm. We went we went through a ton of them, and they all sucked. So we created mm-hmm. our own. So now we use offers to owners. dot com. What's your? How did you do due diligence then, and then now? <sighs> this is hilarious. Uh huh. I like this. <laughs> We would take a plat, due diligence is when uh, somebody signs an offer and they send it back, so you look up the property. It would start with a plat map. So we would we'd have to get the plat map from the county. How long is, would that take? Which is nearly, well, it would take a week at least because you'd have to send a check to the county. They would go back and Xerox it on a photocopier and send it back to you in the mail. If you're real lucky, they would email it to you. And this is around when email started, which is... Not when it started, but when it became prevalent in like 04. 
but they didn't they still didn't there's some counties you still have to send a check like there's counties in arkansas that still are not computerized what's your due diligence number one tool now i mean you can pull up offers to, i mean uh, neighbor scoop again we created the tool because we were so dissatisfied. Kind of I'm going with this too. I didn't even realize as we're talking this through, we had how many tools that we had to create to make them even better. We created neighborscoop.com uh, to do this. Mm-hmm. So you, you, it's when you can do it on the phone with the seller now. You can pull up their property and say, "Yep, I'm going to buy it." And you have their phone number. It's amazing. Yeah. And FEMA flood map stuff. It's awesome. It's easy to pull up real estate that if, if it has a post office address, one two three Main Street. Mm-hmm. But there's 150 million properties in the country, like 85% of them don't have a post office address. Mm-hmm. And there's very, very few tools. One of them is a neighbor scoop that allows you to just put in a state, you know, a county APN. And there it is. And it pops right up. Yep. All right. Talk to me about uh, property management, like your CRM. How did you manage the uh, deal flow back then? And- we very poorly managed it in Excel. How many times did you like lose it and have to go back know. recreate it? Oh, <laughs> I don't know how many deals we lost. I, I suspect it's a lot. <laughs> when I first started, that was one of the things that was like every year we get the tax bills, right? And we're like, oh, wow, we forgot about it. We still own that. Where did that go? We still get tax oh bills for properties that That's I'm true. like, oh, geez, I didn't. Do we still own that? Yeah. Yeah. I had one just the other day. I'm like, oh, I forgot about it. I, I actually paid a current because they're about to take it back. I'm like, you know what? I, I still want this one. So I got it all current. That's so funny. All right, and so what's your property management system now? You mean like a CRM, mm-hmm. not a property manager? Yeah, not the Airtable. person. Airtable. We use Airtable very mm-hmm. successfully. We just show, uh, talked about it on Career Path, and everybody was like, "Wow, this actually works." It's pretty simple. We don't get any money for no. talking about this, and and don't want any money. It's just, it's a, and, and the important thing about these CRMs, including Airtable, is you don't. If you're new, you don't need. If you're doing thirty or forty deals a year, you don't need a CRM. You, you know, that's you can just manage that in Excel with a, um, on Google uh, Drive mm-hmm. and get VAs involved if you need to. But it's when you're doing two, three, four, five hundred deals a year or a month in some cases, you got to it gets to be a mess. OK, you're almost at 100 percent. I have one last question for you. Back then and again, up to now versus now, what was your number one go to resource for help or guidance or something like that mentoring there isn't any yeah how about there's now? no place to get any questions answered uh, in fact you know what land has been the bastard stepchild of all real estate and continues to be uh, misunderstood and completely overlooked by m- the mass majority of real estate people I don't care if they're real estate agents or real estate investment trusts uh, they're just that's just not what for whatever reason people want to be in until you talk to a, a, a single family residential home builder, and then they'll say, land is the bane of my existence. I can't ever find any. When I do find it, it's too expensive. So it just becomes this thing where everybody doesn't like it. Go to any, well, now it's because of COVID, you can't, but go onto any webinar and ask, well, you know, I'm gonna thinking about buying some land. They'll, you'll just get screamed at and scoffed at. <laughs> What's your number one resource for help and guide us and everything now? Jill DeWitt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh darn you're almost at 100 <laughs> percent. no it's, it's, it's just sounded like a commercial now you no know. no it's Land no Academy honestly a, when i wrote this stuff oh down, discord is mine that's what i thought you were gonna say too yeah discord is yeah if i have any questions about anything or i need a business partner or you have a money community for now. It, i just go to discord well i was thinking about how it changed from then to now and then it went to oh my gosh we've helped make these changes that I didn't even realize until we're talking about it. I didn't know this show was going to go this way, but here's my final comments. There's never been a better time, never, to buy and sell land. There's never been more tools, more help, uh, more data. Money. And more money available, and more instruction, and more willing sellers, sellers warmed up willing sellers, because there's, it's crazy out there right now. And it's going to plane off. This whole market's going to plane off. It's not going to crash. It's going to plane off for a while, and then it's going to even be a better time. There'll, there'll be inventories will rise, and it's just I've never had in the worst of times, and in the best of times, I've always had a jam-packed pipeline full of acquisition candidates. That's the truth. Yep. Thank you, babe. 
Happy you could join us today. Five days a week, you can find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is, well, it's Jack Thursday. Five things you must know before you start real estate investing. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. That was awesome. Was it? Yeah, I think that I, was one of my favorite shows. You know what? Every time I turn the camera on on these, show, on these episodes, huh? I really try to not sound preachy, and I think I sound preachy there. No, it was good. I really want you to share then to now. You did a great job. It was a pain of in the butt. explaining it, yeah. To get deals done back then. Yeah. But on the flip side, there was absolutely nobody buying and selling land. Yeah. No one. So, you know, I don't look back on those times like a, you know, a gray-haired guy and say, those are the good old days. <laughs> These are yeah, better. It's better true. now. Totally agree. Even the deals we are doing the deals are, are better. bigger and better and the data's easier. Better. I have help now. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. If you need any sort of ownership or property details, including owner phone numbers and FEMA flood map overlays, check out neighborscoop.com. Created by investors, that's us for investors like you. We're Stephen Joe. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.